Thank you. Um, yes, so my name is Andrea. I work at the uh, University of Lille in France. Um, so today we'll talk about uh, what we did uh, to discretize some very specific class of optimal transport uh, problem. Uh, this is uh, work with uh, mostly with Enrico Fac and uh, Gabriele Todeschi, who uh, Gabriele is in Paris and Enrico is in, in Bergen now. Um, so first, uh, to start, um, you might have seen some uh, slide like this already, so I wanted to tell you what is optimal transport. Uh, and the, the answer is optimal transport comes from a very simple question that, uh, that was asked by Monge at the end of the 18th century. And the question is, we want to displace some uh, pile of sand from one location to, uh, to another. Uh, this pile of sand we can represent it mathematically as a distribution, a mass distribution, so a probability measure in general. And um, in, uh, what is the, if we ask what is the best way to do so, the best way in what sense? So we want to minimize some cost. And uh, uh, there is a cost of transporting a, a, a particle, a unit mass, from one location to the other. And the interesting case is the case where the uh, cost is proportional to the distance uh, between the, the two points, to some power P, let's say. Because in this case, uh, the total cost of uh, mass displacement we also generates a, a distance, but on the space of probability measures on the domain. And these are the so-called Wasserstein uh, distances. Uh, and uh, once you have these, in fact, what you have is more, uh, because you also um, can talk about uh, geodesics or short shortest paths on, on, on this space, uh, which are the best ways of uh, displacing this mass. And uh, this looks like this. So you really have this, uh, this uh, uh, horizontal type of interpolation, which is very different from what, what you would have if you try to do just a linear type of interpolation between the two distributions. Okay, so uh, this uh, problem can, re can really be formulated in terms of this uh, interpolation. And uh, like from a mathematical perspective, it's, uh, it's an optimization problem that has this form. Uh, so this is uh, the so-called uh, dynamical formulation of Benamou-Bernier Benamou formulation of optimal, optimal transport. And so what, uh, what you see here, it's a space-time optimization problem. Uh, we are uh, trying to look for, uh, so this is our interpolation, which is going to be a curve of densities that satisfies the continuity equation with uh, zero flux uh, boundary conditions uh, at the boundary. And um, we try to look the, the curve of densities that have minimal kinetic energy with fixed initial and final conditions. Okay. So this is uh, our problem. Uh, this is the case of uh, p is equal to two, or the power is equal to two. And so this is the basic, uh, the, basic the, the most uh, basic type of optimal transport problem, probably. Uh, but it, uh, many variants of this problem can be cooked up, and they are relevant in different fields. Uh, for example, in the context of mean field games, um, what, what, what often what it, the, the amount is uh, a variation of this cost where we are not uh, an extra term that depends on, the, on some energy, uh, E of rho, that depends on the density distribution. In this model, uh, the motion of particles, they try to uh, optimize their trajectories, but they also uh, see the density and try to uh, minimize the, the, some energy that depends on, on this. Uh, so this is an example from um, uh, more related to statistics. Uh, in in uh, some uh, specific Kalman filters, uh, there is a, a natural metric that related to optimal transport that comes up, which is basically this problem, where one uh, additionally constrains the covariance of the, of the density to be uh, the identity, and uh, one gets this uh, type of interpolations. That, uh, that this, so this is a, so I didn't say it, though, most of the, form, the, 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 the simulation I will show they are more, they made of fair, fair drag. Uh, but uh, and also you, you can talk about uh, use this optimal transport uh, problem as a building block to construct discretization, uh, time discretization for specific PDEs, uh, and in particular uh, PDEs that have some entropy that's uh, dissipated uh, in time. So this is a, a, a numerical scheme, uh, time discretization, so it, it's a time-stepping procedure. You see that you, I give you a row n, you can compute a row n plus one uh, by solving a minimization problem. Uh, and uh, so it's some sort of generalized version of the implicit Euler scheme, and you can use it to produce a, a solution of uh, 
classic PDEs, for example, the focal plank equation or the porous medium equation, but also more degenerate type of, of PDEs. So the main uh, thing I will talk about today is the discretization of this uh, problem, and in particular the main key uh, classical, let's say, uh, uh, ingredient here is to make this change of variable, so you talk about the momentum rather than the velocity, because in this uh, variable the problem becomes uh, a convex optimization problem, because the, the cost here is a convex function and the constraint uh, become uh, linear. So uh, I have a convex optimization problem. So there are two questions that uh, can be asked. What, uh, how do I discretize it? In particular, in the finite element context, what are the spaces that I have to use? And also, how do I compute the solutions uh, efficiently? And in particular, we'll talk about two approaches, uh, nam namely the primal dual methods and what they entail in terms of implementation and, uh, and uh, yes, and the discretization part. Uh, and uh, approach that, that, uh, that rely on, on uh, Newton and uh, interior penalty uh, techniques. So, um, to start with, so to talk about primal dual methods, first uh, I need to talk about uh, the, the settle point structure of this problem. And uh, to, uh, the, 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 uh, like the smart thing to do here is to put yourself in the in, uh, the space-time domain, which I call omega, so 0 over 1 is the time interval, and uh, I call sigma here this vector field that is a rho in the time direction and m in the space direction. So this is the d plus 1 uh, domain, so it's d plus 1 uh, r to d plus 1. And uh, so our problem, I can write it like this. So, so I'm imagining some uh, some function of the of the um, of this sigma, which is the kinetic energy that I wrote before. And the constraint now is just uh, saying that the divergence of this vector field is uh, zero. So it's uh, somehow resembles some classical um, variational formulation, for example, the Poisson problem. Uh, but uh, um, now the, this f function, so it's a convex uh, function, in particular I can write it as a soup of linear functions. And in particular, this, this, this has a very uh, specific structure in this case. Uh, so here is the supremum of this inner product where q is also a vector field, where at each point in space, so it's really point-wise constraint, uh, I, I am in some uh, specific convex uh, set. So it's a point-wise constraint that I need to impose in this uh, setting. So my, my original problem, so the problem that I wrote earlier, just looks like this. So it's, it's the infimum of sigma in the continuity equation, let's say, and q in this uh, space over here. So it's, it looks very simple. And uh, in fact, it's not that simple to get uh, a discretization that makes sense and they converge uh, to the right value. So this was our main interest uh, when uh, I started to work on this, to, to make sure that actually the discretization uh, converge. Uh, and uh, so the key ingredient here is to use a tensor uh, product uh, space because there is really a difference uh, uh, how things behave in the time direction and in space direction. So it's, uh, it's really important to have this uh, in, the, in the finite element space that, that you use. Uh, but still, I mean, you ha we have a convergence result for this type of discretization. I will talk about them a bit more in detail in, 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 a, in a sec. Um, but there is no really an in soup condition, so we don't really have uh, an understanding, full understanding of the stability of the solutions of this problem. So in some cases, uh, uh, we have convergence discretizations that uh, have those oscillations. Uh, it's not fully understood. But we do have some convergence results. Um, and uh, there are also, I want to say, some different alternatives. But so this, when we started working on this, it was uh, uh, the main reason is that we want something that worked on unstructured uh, meshes. And it was relatively uh, new. Um, so once uh, we have this uh, settle point uh, structure, uh, also this is relatively classical, one thing, uh, one approach to solve the problem is use some uh, what we call proximal splitting or primal dual algorithms. What, what, what it means that we are optimizing essentially separately in the two variables and uh, it's a two-step algorithm where uh, I project this PC and PK are L2 uh, projections uh, and this is um, uh, 
this is uh, the, uh, the, the, the so we we had we we move um, according to the gradient of our function in one direction and then project and the same uh, in for the other variable. So it's just this alternate projection uh, procedure. And uh, so the, this this uh, this PC here uh, leads, of course, to uh, to a mixed uh, uh, Poisson uh, problem, just uh, linear uh, and nice. So in principle, you would want to have uh, sigma in some H diff conforming uh, space. And uh, this other one is somehow a pointwise uh, projection because I said the, the constraint is imposed pointwise. And since this is uh, going to be an L2 projection, we don't want to have coupling between these degrees of freedom. So it means that uh, it's, it's good to have, uh, to have something that's really implementable. You want to use uh, some uh, discontinuous collecting uh, space. Um, the nice thing, so the approach is first uh, discretize and optimize. And in fact, uh, also in terms of the algorithm, there is really no difference between the algorithm in the continuous and the discrete setting, and this also leads us to have a convergence uh, uh, result for the for this algorithm uh, in discrete world. Uh, and the main properties is that here you don't see the fact that the function that we are trying to optimize is a non-smooth function, and because at zero we really want to capture what happened at zero because the density can be zero. Um, and, but in this here, there's no really problem with the fact that rho needs to be uh, can be zero, um, and it's algorithm that converges linearly, um, which uh, in general actually it's a bit uh, slow. Uh, there are different alternatives, uh, so uh, but more or less you have some o always pretty much the same uh, ingredient. Uh, so this is just an example of what uh, the type of spaces that then we ended up uh, ended up using. So this is the lowest order uh, possible uh, setting. So here you have essentially the this is the space for the density. So we are discontinuous in space, a continuous uh, in time, and uh, and this is a space in for the momentum. So it's radiatoma here in space and dg uh, zero in time. And for Q here, just a DG field uh, in the, on the on the whole space-time domain. So this is also another example of the simulation. It's, uh, it's uh, some mass distribution that uh, needs to go on the other side, and there are some singularities. So you see some concentration uh, here on the on the diagonal. So it's a difficult test case. In principle, here you should really see a, a mass concentrated along the diagonal here. Um, this is the number of iterations that you get to, to get some um, convergence, and uh, uh, it's generally slow in the sense that uh, here you have to solve for each iteration that was some uh, problem uh, in the space-time domain. Uh, so it's not uh, um, so to solve to solve problems like this, it takes uh, it takes quite a while. Um, I thought of listing some things that I wanted to do, and I couldn't, uh, either for time, I don't know if they're really doable in FireJack or not, so um, I have a list of these things. Uh, so one thing you can do here, so I, I split the problem in these two projections, but in fact you can do many other things. One thing you can do is like, okay, I have this, 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 uh, this uh, divergence constraint, but I can say, okay, I, I can split it into parts, one part on the uh, time derivative of the density and the other on the divergence, and regard these as two decoupled uh, uh, variables. So in fact, the projection on this space is gonna be the projection on, on these two constraints separately, which decouples in each uh, uh, columns of the of tensor product mesh and the space uh, part. So you get a bunch of problems that you need to solve uh, that are independent, so that you can parallelize, but uh, I don't know if this is really feasible uh, to, to, to do this uh, using the tensor product uh, um, data structure. The, um, uh, there is a class of problems that I was interested in also that uh, come from a work of Lenara Mont Saint Jean, who's in uh, Lisbon. And uh, these are models where you have a bulk, uh, where um, the same thing that I described before happens but also you have a density that's concentrated on the boundary. And this density, and they, they both solve uh, uh, the same sort of optimal transport uh, problem, but uh, they are coupled by the fact that what goes out of the bulk goes into the, uh, on the interface, and uh, so they, then this is somehow penalized by the cost uh, function. So in practice, what do you need to do? 
in the same setting you need to solve some PDEs on the boundary of your uh, tensor products uh, uh, domain. Uh, which is also something I'm not sure how to do, uh, and also there are some uh, some things that uh, that uh, I would like to investigate a bit more is that to, to construct a harder method to these uh, these problems, there are some approaches that have been relatively recent for this uh, type of problems that are somehow brute force is really uh, <coughs> better, so there's no really guarantee of uh, how they behave. Uh, but in fact, you can cook up things in a way that's more reasonable from a mathematical point of view. And uh, yeah, so I think this is uh, this is feasible. It amounts to basically changing this projection, uh, which becomes more complicated. But uh, I won't go into details on this. And so the other the other approach that I wanted to talk about is the Newton type of methods, and this rely of um, writing the optimality conditions to this uh, problem. And uh, how much time do I have? No, you need to keep okay. Um, Okay, so you write your optimality conditions and they look like this. Uh, so essentially what happens is that your momentum is gonna be rho times the gradient of some function for in the optimal setting. And this function is uh, what drives the particle, satisfies the hamilton jacobi equation that looks like this, which says effectively that the particle should travel on straight uh, lines. And the positivity of uh, the density is incorporated by this uh, uh, constraint here. So this is S. Uh, variable uh, we should have a sign, uh, don't say. Okay. Um, but you have some this sort of, sort of uh, uh, system uh, here. And uh, the important thing is that you want to have this uh, type of system to be able to construct it also in the discrete setting, which, which is not generally trivial if you start from our primal problem where uh, you discretize the momentum and the density, but if you choose spaces uh, uh, um, carefully, you can have some sort of discrete duality. And in particular, for these spaces, you can arrive a system that looks like this for uh, uh, the Cruzera VR uh, uh, space for the uh, potential, using the Cruzera VR space of the potential field. Fine. We didn't explore this direction. In fact, what I will show now is just some what, what we did in the context of finite volume discretization for these problems, where cooking up this duality is relatively easier, let's say, um, because you really work on the discrete of freedom directly. And uh, what we did is using uh, uh, essentially a continuation methods to take care of the positivity constraint, which is the main problem when you want to tackle this, uh, uh, this uh, system. And uh, this amounts to adding some uh, uh, penalization on the on the on the cost cost, and then uh, so we are just doing continuation and solve a bunch of problems here uh, using uh, Newton methods, uh, gradually reducing the tolerance, the, the 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 regularization parameter. So the what you have to solve at the end is a system like this. Uh, your Newton step will uh, look like this, and again it's a settle point system. Rho and phi, phi are fixed, uh, but uh, it's uh, not easy to analyze it from a theoretical point of view. There's no, again, uh, in soup condition that's uh, trivially uh, can be uh, defined. And also, which, which is standard in, in uh, interior point strategy, is that the system becomes in condition as epsilon goes to zero. So we really want uh, a good preconditioner. And uh, this is uh, what we were uh, working on also. So there are several approaches that we tried on. And in fact, we, we, we uh, were trying to get this also in, uh, in uh, Firedrake in the future, I guess. So the, just to, I'll just describe what they look like. So what you can do here is try to approximate either the primal dual sure complement, which look like this. And uh, what we observed, in the, what we tried for this is just to use some multi-grid multi approach, which was an algebraic approach for, to solve this system, which uh, actually was very slow in the pre-processing pre time. And uh, a good thing that we wanted to try to use some geometric multi-grid approach, which is probably doable, feasible in the, in the 5 jack um, and uh, uh, what we ended up using, the, the, it's uh, something else. It's, uh, it's a, it's a precondition that based on the observation that you have some uh, commutation at the continuous level between the, the, the continuous operators, approximately, which allows you to make uh, some, uh, 
appro some some approximation also in the in the inverse uh, Schur complement, and namely. Uh, here, uh, what the difference is that this C matrix uh, become comes outside of this uh, of this. Uh, it's not in between the differential operators, and it behaves a bit uh, better. So we get a reasonable algorithm uh, at the end. So this is stuff that we will we want to uh, implement in Fabric. And uh, with this, uh, I thank you for for, for your. <laughs>